fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. Today is all about Eve. The Marvel Legends, Hallow's Eve that is, and Jack-O-Lantern. But first, a shout out to my new friend Anthony. He beat me to the punch at GameStop, but then decided to let me have her, so this video would not have been possible without him. Starting off with the packaging, and we actually have two different styles of blister cards. Jack-O-Lantern is the animated series style retro card. We previously looked at that with Scarlet Spider and Tombstone. It's interesting because he didn't actually appear on the animated series, but he was made for the original Toy Biz line. Hovercraft! On that note, can I just take a moment to revisit the package for Scarlet Spider? Specifically that they felt the need to write Spider Clone twice. If it was different in other languages, I'd get it, but it's literally the same word. Flipping him around, we get a Toy Biz style instruction picture and a bio. Eve, however, comes in that new Fangled Blister card. We previously saw that with the likes of Beyond Ben Riley or Miles Morales, and we'll be looking at it again with Spider Shot and Last Stand. I do like the aesthetic of these. Nice picture of her on the side, along with a nice big digital render on the back. And like Jack-O-Lantern, she also gets a little bio. The one thing this wave doesn't have that I honestly do miss are shots of other available figures. That, however, is not enough to dock them, so for packaging, Jack and Eve get five points. Moving on to presentation, and Eve is six inches, whereas Jack to the top of his head is six and a half, but to the top of his fire is seven and a quarter. Jack-O-Lantern, or Jason Mack, Dale was actually a much older Spider-Man villain dating back to 1981, while Hollow's Eve is actually a very recent creation, kind of. Janine Godby is one of many aliases of a woman on the run for murder and has been Ben Riley's main love interest dating back to the 90s. In recent comics, however, she was transformed into Hollow's Eve by the Goblin Queen. Jason here has a lot of new parts, but also some very strategic reuse. Specifically, his arms and legs come from Vulcan, with those same legs and also boots coming from the all-new Bucky Cap. In fact, you can tell that they're Bucky Cap in particular as opposed to other Captains America because of the matching tread. I do feel like these hands and gloves might be reuse. I checked them against my Goblin collection, but no matches there. I also went through my Captain America collection to no avail. If they are reuse and you happen to know where they come from, sound off in the comments below. One thing that's definitely new is the torso, though it does look as though it used Vulcan as a base. Either way, we get some nice shiny new scaling detail, a belt of pumpkin bombs, we'll be revisiting during playability, and this nicely textured scarf. The highlight, however, is this awesome new head. Obviously, I love the translucent fire effect, but I really appreciate the extra sculpting and painting to bring all the details out. This head is full of personality and is a lot of fun. Flipping him around, and for those wondering, he does not have any peg holes on his back. This brings us to Hallow's Eve. Looking at her double peg hole, we can tell her torso comes from the Age of Apocalypse Rogue, but otherwise her arms and legs come from Shriek. Additionally, she has the tried-and-true Marvel Legends purse. It's not a purse! For a character wearing a skin-type bodysuit, all that reuse doesn't really bother me. After all, it leaves the budget open for accessories and new pieces like this head. I love the diabolical grin and the different paint used for the teeth, though I do want to take a moment to talk about the hair. When in GameStop discussing this figure with my new friend Anthony, we both agreed that having a darker red would have really helped it to stand out. But with that being said, I do have to concede that depending on the comic you read, this brighter orange is accurate. And boy golly, is this orange bright. That's not an insult, by the way. I absolutely love it. Looking at the contrast between the black and orange, and you really get that Halloween feeling. The jack-o'-lanterns on her shawl have lots of personality, though be warned, they come off very easily and do flip-flop around. Additionally, for those who might want to paint her head, you can easily remove it from the hood. And you know what they say. You can take the girl out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the girl. For presentation, I'm giving these two trick-or-treaters five points. Moving on to posability, and with so many familiar parts, the articulation will be pretty familiar as well. Eve's head is on a ball joint and a disc swivel. Jack-o'-lantern, however, is on a dumbbell joint. Side note, if you wanted to, you could use his head as an accessory for something else. You know, like as a mask for me. Neither figure really gets a whole heck of a lot of up, but Eve gets 
better down. She does not, however, get any tilt, but Jack gets a little bit, and both can look all the way around. Moving down, they can raise their arms this high. No butterfly joint for Eve, but Jack does. That said, both have bicep swivel. They also have pinless double jointed elbows, with Eve having a perfect bend. And then at the ends of the arms, they have wrists that can swivel and hinge up or down. Move into the middle, and Eve has a diaphragm joint. Jack o' lantern, however, has an ab crunch and a waist swivel. Just to make life easy for a minute, I'm going to remove that purse. And as expected, Jack has the better hunch forward. Eve, however, can tilt, whereas all Jack can do is twist. Below the pumpkin bombs, and both figures have ball jointed hips. Between the two, Eve has a very impressive high kick, but their spreads are fairly equivalent. Moving on down, and both figures have thigh cut, as well as pinless double jointed knees. Jack benefits from having boot cut, but both figures can hinge, and like Jack a lantern to hobgoblin to demogoblin, pivot. For poseability, I'm giving these two five points. Moving on to playability, and remember when I said we'd be coming back to this pumpkin bomb belt? One of these bombs is removable. Though to be fair, it's less like a pumpkin bomb and more like a Nerf ball. Either way, he can hold it like so. That said, when you're not interested in throwing pumpkin bombs, you could always switch out for the fists and throw hands. Otherwise, he comes with his hovercraft. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say hovercraft? I meant to say hovercraft! Jack-o'-lantern can peg into it like so. Turning it upside down, you'll notice this hole, though. Although he doesn't come with one, it's compatible with the flight stand that came with Demogoblin and Hawkeye. When not in flight mode, it actually has a cap, so you can spin it like a top. I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio in Inception. Eve comes with two of her Halloween masks, the Vampire and the Devil. To answer your question, yes, she can wear them. You have to fiddle a bit with the Devil, but hey, the Devil is no stranger to fiddling. In the comic, she has several masks, so it's kind of weird that they only have her coming with two, but I have a theory. With one of her masks giving her a ghost form, I'm wondering if we're gonna have a variation in transparent plastic. And with Wolfsbane coming out, I can't help but wonder if they might reuse some of those parts to do Hallow's Eve's werewolf form. Regardless of what they may or may not do, she does come with an alternate pair of fists, an alternate pair of open hands, and her purse. But playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Starting with Jack-O-Lantern, and here we have that original Toy Biz one again, and then the 6-inch version that they made as part of Spider-Man Classic. I should point out that this one is technically called Mad Jack, and that Hasbro did make a Jack-O-Lantern before, but I don't have it. Just for fun though, and here they are with the Power Rangers Pumpkin Wrapper. I don't have either Hasbro one, but here's the original Toy Biz Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin and Jack-O-Lantern had quite the feud in the comics until Jack-O-Lantern became Hobgoblin. In fact, not only did he become Hobgoblin, he's the Hobgoblin that became Demogoblin. As for Eve, her great love is Ben Riley, so here we have the original Hobgoblin wave version of him. Here we have the blister card. Here we have Beyond Ben Riley. Beyond Ben Riley is actually just like regular Ben Riley, except that he's plant-based. And then here we have Ben Riley's turn as Chasm. One of Ben's current rivalries in the comic is with Miles Morales, so here's the contemporary version of him, and also the Space Venom version. And for the one who turned Janine into Hollow's Eve, here we have the Goblin Queen. Incidentally, Goblin Queen is also the one that turned Hobgoblin into Demogoblin. For a few other supporting characters from this arc, and here we have Black Cat, Mary Jane Watson, Mary Jane dressed as Black Cat, which is a thing that happened in the story, and Venom. This one is the Amazon 3-pack. For the other figures in the wave we've looked at, though, and here we have Scarlet Spider and Tombstone. And then for Jack-O-Lantern's real arch nemesis, here we have Wilson Fisk the Kingpin. As for Peter Parker Spider-Man, and here we have Renew Your Vows, but for something smaller, here we have Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I'll bet you good money we're gonna be seeing that new Spider-Boy character on this body sometime soon. And then for a relative scale comparison, here we have Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. I actually think you might be able to fudge Jack-O-Lantern in with Select, but as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Say, could I take a closer look at your helmet? Uh, alright, sure. Yes, now I have all the powers of Stealth Iron Man! Not a great plan. Each character's been given a pretty good number of accessories, though admittedly Eve would have benefited from another mask or two. Even so, for playability, I'm giving Jack and Eve five points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Each figure retails for $24.99 and does a great job of expanding on Spider-Man's gallery of rogues. I hope we haven't seen the end of Spider-Man Build-A-Figure waves, but each 
each one of these figures does have a great piece count. So for price, I'm giving Hallow's Eve and Jack-O-Lantern five points, averaging to a perfect total of five out of five. In my next Spidey video, I'll be taking a look at Last Stand Spider-Man and Spider-Shot. I'll also be ranking the entire assortment. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.